an extremely warm welcome to everybody joining us today on YouTube. Thank you for joining in as we at uh, Park Avenue host at the Horsfall Stadium, Kidderminster Harriers. Hell of a lot of external noise right now, I do apologise. <laughs> Running through the teams today, we'll start with the visitors. In goal number one, Tom Palmer. Number three, Caleb Richards. Number four, Nat Knight Percival. Number five, Christian Pierce. Number eight, Nathan Lowe. Number ten, Ashley Hemmings. Number eleven, Yusifo Cise. Number 12, Joe Folks. Number 14, Zach Brown. Number 17, Ethan Fremantle. And number 23, Shane Byrne. Starting in goal for Park Avenue. Number 1, George Sykes Kenworthy. Number 2, Lucas O'Dunstan. Number 3, Rhys Staunton. Making his home debut since the signature. Number 4, Mitch Lund. Number 5, Luca Heaven. Number 6, Shane Maruza. Number 7, Jamie Spencer. Before his suspension. Number eight, Simon Richmond. Number nine, Jacob Blythe. Number 10, Andre Brooks. And number 11, Harrison Hopper. Apologies for, for the intermittent in and out, folks. We've, uh, we've had a few technical difficulties to start this day off today, but we are with you live. Players yet to come out from the pavilion. They will be with us shortly. Both sets of players now making their way on to the pitch. Kidderminster setting up with an experienced back line but full of Football League experience, Nat Knight Percival, ex Bradford City, Christian Pierce, ex Championship, Fulham and Ipswich centre back. The Harriers will be looking to back up last season's push for promotion as they unfortunately fell to Boston in the playoffs at the semi final stage, finishing fourth in the Conference North. They certainly will be hoping for a similar feat this season as they look to get back into the Conference National. For Park Avenue today, we were looking to get our season underway with the first win of the season after it being snatched away at the last seconds at Scarborough midweek. For the visitors today, they have had an indifferent start to the season. They started the season off with a 2-1 win against Curzon Ashton and followed that up with a 0-0 draw against Leamington and a 1-0 loss against Blythe. Sorry, the other way around. 2-1 loss against Curzon and a 1-0 win against Blythe. Certainly an indifferent start for a team hoping to push for playoffs or potentially automatic promotion. For Avenue today, we do have Jamie Spencer in the midfield, but unfortunately he will miss the next game due to the seven-day turnaround on his suspension. Reece Staunton does figure once again for Avenue after making the permanent switch over from Neighbours Bradford. Maruza does continue the, in his position at left back, making his third consecutive start, as does Andre Brooks for his second consecutive start out on the left wing. Certainly impressed midweek, did the young man on loan. It's to be hopeful that Andre Brooks can provide the goals and assists, I think. For Avenue this season while he's on loan. Both teams now just getting ready to get us underway. Jacob Blythe once again leading the line for Avenue today. Didn't start the opening game of the season, that was given to Eddie Church, but since then it looks as if Mark Bauer has placed his trust in the former Leicester City man. It will be Kidderminster who get us underway, kicking left to right. Referee just doing the final checks. Avenue look to be setting up today with a five back line, a five-three-two, some sort of formation along them lines. 
Andre Brooks looks as if he's going to probably settle more into the centre today, leaving Hopper out on the out on the right, wide right. We do get us underway, and it is Kidderminster who look to go long early, putting the Avenue back line under immediate pressure. Richmond and Hopper straight into challenges with the Kidderminster midfield, and we start the game off with the Kidderminster throwing on the left hand side. Avenue will be desperate to get a good start today. Certainly, we, they would have been hoping to win away at Scarborough midweek, especially after being in a position of being 2 0 ahead and with only 10 minutes left to play. Um, Scarborough, to be fair to them, they did well. They stuck with, stuck with it, but they did have a helping hand from the referee on the day, leading to Jamie Spencer getting sent off late on, unsuccessfully appealed by the club this week. That did follow his unbelievable finish from the halfway line. If you've not seen that, search that out on YouTube. Unbelievable finish as he dispossessed the Scarborough man in the midfield and looked straight up at the keeper off his line, placing it over his head from the halfway line. Very David Beckham-esque. Anyhow, Sykes Kenworthy going to get us back underway here with a goal kick. Goes long towards Jacob Blythe. Jacob Blythe does get there first. Unable to control it, bounces nastily for him, unfortunately, and back into a kid of to feet. We're out wide here with the right back today. And it's worked, worked well by Andre Brooks. Andre Brooks stepped, stepped across Folks very well, the number 12 for Kidderminster, and won possession well. Back in comfortable possession now for Kidderminster with Nat Percival, the ex Bradford City man on familiar territory here today, back in Bradford. Christian Pierce. Also, as said earlier, extremely experienced in the Football League. Jamie Spencer doing well to win a free kick for Avenue here. He takes it quickly, he looks to play into the channel where Hopper was trying to take up the position. It's cleared away well by Pierce. Now, Kidderman's a look to get onto the attack and it's dispossessed well by Staunton. Folks looks to go long in towards the man up front for Kidderminster today. Ethan Fremantle, but he goes all the way through to Sykes Kenworthy. Fremantle looking into his second season at Kidderminster today, uh, this season sorry. A lot of new additions for Kidderminster this season as they look to build on last season. Nat Percival, as we've mentioned both before, Christian Pierce, CC Folks and Zach Brown all new to the side this season. Sykes Kenworthy with the ball in his hands once again. Ball carried through to him nicely. Sykes Kenworthy goes long out of his hands in towards the right hand side of the pitch where Hopper will look to get up. It's unchallenged for the Kidderminster man, but it does bounce kindly for Avenue and it's skipped away well by Hopper. Hopper left footed goes towards Maruda. Maruda's not going to get there on this occasion. It's cleared well by Folks. Folks now has given it into Richards and Richards does allow it to go out for a throw. -in. Sorry, it was Hemmings for Kidderminster. Back in play now, comfortable possession for Kidderminster in the midfield. Shane Byrne looks to go wide, switch the play. It's shanked into the box, head away well by Haven. It's brought down well by Kidderminster and it's broken nicely for Andre Bro uh, for, sorry, Maruza to clear. On the counter now, Hopper has got possession well, gets his head up, gives it into Spencer. Spencer looked to go first time into Blythe. Blythe wanted it in behind the back line and unfortunately it's dispossessed easily by the Harriers. Christian Pierce now with comfortable possession for Kidderminster. Combined total age in the back of nearly 70 year old between Christian Pierce and Nat Percival. Certainly experience that they'll be looking to hold on to this season. Good ball into the channel, which Fremantle has managed to bring down well. It was bullied out of it by Reece Stone and good defending by the young man. Spencer looks to go into the channel. He's put a lot on it. And it will get away from Andre Brooks down this left side and out for a Kidderminster throw in. Maroods are looking to instruct James Spencer to get in there, get in on the, the man waiting, waiting to take possession from the throw in. I don't think the experienced midfielder probably needs the instruction from his young left back, but it's nice enthusiasm that you want to see from the Huddersfield man. Jacob Blythe up in a clash, and there's a definite clash of heads here. We could have some a bit of seriousness here. Both players went down heavy 
bang in the back of the head. It's Jacob Blythe, and I can't see the kid amidst the man currently. Um, but instantly, both players fell to the ground with very little reaction. It looked like Jacob Blythe probably was pushed from the other defender into the back of the Kidderminster man. Kidderminster man just getting to his feet now, thankfully. He's come round from that quite quickly. Jacob Blythe currently still down for Avenue. We will just have a quick break in play here. Thankfully, the Kidderminster captain doesn't look as if he's had any serious effect from that, Shane Byrne. He's going to take a check of his head, but there doesn't appear to be any lingering issues. Blythe still down currently. Perfect football weather here today at the Horsfall Stadium. Not too hot, not too cold. Little wind just simmering in the background. No rain, but it's nice and slick on the surface. The pitch here always immaculate given the all weather conditions of the pitch. Never really holds up. Certainly think at this level it's something that is very beneficial. Six minutes in here and so far the game has been extremely stop start. Not helped by this clash of heads. Just interrupting play currently. Avenue side. Okay, I think Matt Bauer will be fairly happy with his team start. They've not been able to get a foot on the ball as of yet, but as we've seen so far this season, they are far more comfortable out of possession than in possession. They would much rather look to turn their opposition on counters quickly, work off set pieces. Kidderminster certainly will be a team that will be hoping to be in and around the top six, top ten at the very worst case. So for having you today, they probably are challenging opposition that We'll see this as really a, a, a banker of a three points away from home. Or well, certainly they'd be hoping to get three points away from home. We're back underway now anyway. We've got a throw in on the far side. It's going to be taken by a Dunstan very deep into his own half. It's going to go long down the line. Skips past everybody and bounces nicely for Nat Percival. Nat Percival takes possession back from Christian Pierce and looks down his line into the channel. Nathan Lowe looking to get on the ball deep from the Kidderminster midfield. Kidderminster just keeping good possession here in, the, in their own half, looking for opportunities. This Christian Pierce goes long into the channel towards Fremantle. Fremantle does get a flick, but he can do nothing with it but flick it out for an avenue goal kick. It's nice to see a fairly stable back line for Avenue so far this season, I think. Mark Bauer would look to build from that back line. Sam Fielding's dropped out of the team, but apart from that, the team is has so far been extremely consistent. Mitch Lund and Luke Haven both started the season extremely well. Lucas Dunstan looking to make the right back spot his own. Sex like Ken Worthy gets his back underway here, long towards Jacob Blythe. Jacob Blythe gets up well in the tussle with Knight Percival. Knight Percival wins it on this occasion and goes long. Staunton should be able to see this out of play, and he can. I think the back three of Mitchland, Haven, and Staunton is an extremely reliable back line at this level of Con Conference North football. Certainly isn't a back three that more strikers will enjoy success against. That's where the structure for Avenue will need to be built from this season. If they're hoping for another successful campaign. Once again, Sykes Kenworthy goes long towards Blythe. Mike Percival up extremely well to win the header. Blythe pr needs to do better, really, in them, in them duels. Once again, Richmond won possession. Looks to go into the channel. It's not going to run. The keeper's going to have to deal with this. He just gets his body in front of Hopper and allows it to go out for a Harriers throwing deep into the Kidderminster half. Get back underway here with the left back for the Harriers on the far side. Takes a long throw in. Good delivery from the left back. It's won back by Avenue and Blythe took it down well. Looked to set Richmond on his way. And the defender for the Harriers manages to shepherd the ball out of play for a goal kick. Straight back underway from Tom Palmer in the Harriers goal today to Christian Pierce. Midfield two for the Harriers looking to drop deep to offer options to start building the attack. 
Harry is not looking in any rush to get the ball forward. They want to build the ball, uh, build the play from the back. Look for the right opportunities. They certainly won't be pushed to rush the play. Mike Percival now goes out to Richards. Richards checks back inside and goes to Nathan Lowe. And back to Percival and then across again once more to Christian Pierce. So far, Avenue struggling to get on the ball. Defending well. Reece Stolten once again winning the header there into Maruza. Maruza does extremely well. Shuns off the challenge from Hemmings. Plays it down the line to Andre Brooks. Andre Brooks gets his head up, crosses it across the six-yard box. Knight Percival left with no option but to shank it away for an Avenue throwing. Great movement by Andre Brooks into the channel down the left-hand side. Maruza found him well with the pass. The two lone men combining well. Sheffield United and Huddersfield lone men both doing extremely well down this left-hand side. Maruza looking to get the ball in again. Kidderminster so desperately trying to stop the cross. And it is blocked well and goes out, unfortunately, off a ricochet for a Kidderminster goal kick. Once again, Kidderminster so looking to build from the back. They don't want to go long, certainly not too early, not without the option being a viable one. CC with a poor touch on the left side for the Harriers, gives the ball back to Avenue. Avenue go along quickly in towards Andre Brooks, puts the challenge in well. Blythe looking to follow up, doesn't get there on this occasion. Maruza in the 50 50 wins well, but again, the ball breaks for Kidderminster. And Fremantle unable to guide it into the path of Hemmings for Kidderminster and out for an Avenue throwing. As the season goes further and further, Avenue will be more will become more and more desperate to tr get that first win on the board. They were unfortunate not to get it in the opening week weekend against Kings Lane when they went down to a one 0 defeat late on into the game. Ball's broken now for Hopper. Well, he looks to go along quickly towards Andre Brooks and goes through to the Harriers goalie. Um, yeah, the um, the start of the the season for. Avenue has been a difficult one facing tough opposition teams that are hoping to be in and around the top six. Kings Lane came and unfortunately took three points very late into the game. Nothing in the game on the day really. Certainly then deserved to win the game away at Scarborough during the during the week. So for Avenue, as every weekend goes by, they will become more and more desperate for that first three points. Kidderminster with now some good Possession play, once again, not desperate to go forward too quickly. Byrne turns well, gives it into Folks on the right-hand side. Looks to go down the channel. It's blocked well by Andre Brooks, and it will break for Maruza. Maruza does well again, takes the ball out of his feet, away from the Kidderminster man who's putting him under pressure. Drags the ball under his left foot, does well, goes right-footed into the channel where Hopper was looking to come across. Has put, put the defender under pressure and back to the goalie who manages to clear quickly. Good defending. Good defending by Jula Cohaveny. Breaks in Blythe into Hopper. Looks to break for the one-two. Pierce gets his foot there and just stops that attack. Avenue extremely close to being in on goal then. Fantastic defending by Jan uh, Luke Haven who stepped in in front of the Kidderminster man. The Kidderminster man caught him. He has unfortunately gone down with a bit of a knock as the Avenue centre-back. But the ball broke nicely then for Jacob Blythe, who knocked it into Hopper. Hopper back to Blythe, and unfortunately, Pierce just managed to get his foot in and stop the attack for Avenue. It's extremely stuffy and warm down on pitch side today when the sun comes from behind the clouds. Very warm indeed for the players out there today and spectators alike have a quite a nice looking crowd here at the Horsfall Stadium today Bradford City away at Hartlepool they believe they finished with a 3-1 success today kick started their season after an indifferent start to the season hopefully some of the City fans have found their way to the Horsfall today to support the boys I do get back underway and with Burn with possession for Kidderminster. A lot of the game so far has been played in the Kidderminster half.
with comfortable possession for the Harriers. Caleb Richards now looks to go down the line. Dunstan gets his head there first. Hopper gets there ahead of the Kidderminster man and he's left Hopper in an absolute heap as Nathan Lowe. Nathan Lowe could be in some trouble here. I don't think it's red card worthy. It looked extremely high. I'd be very surprised if he escapes this without some sort of caution. At this level of the game where you, you don't have the benefit of VAR, you find that decisions like that will usually go the way of the person committing the offence and unbelievably it does walk away with no no caution at all. The, the defenders for Avenue are asking the question of the referee, what, what does he have to do exactly to get a yellow card? Referee explains his reasonings to Luca Haven and the game will continue with Sachs Kenworthy taking free kicks from 30 yards outside of his box. Goes in long towards Blythe and once again Knight Percival wins a battle and he's there first. Ball breaks now for Maruda who looks to go back towards Staunton. Staunton goes into the channel towards Andre Brooks. A ball will bounce and stay in play for Avenue. It's won well by Hopper. Hopper goes down and the referee wags his finger says no foul given. The Avenue players are up in arms Hopper got his body in front of the defender, went down under the challenge, nothing given, perhaps he's gone down a little bit too softly. I personally think that that is a penalty, penalty for Avenue. Anyway, the game back underway, Maroods are now with possession, tries to go towards Blythe and it's cleared well by Kidderminster. Avenue's just starting to build into the game. Hopper goes down again under a challenge from Knight Purcell. He's not going to win that one. Ball breaks all the way through to Sykes Kenworthy. Danny Boschel and Mark Bauer on the sidelines for Avenue claiming some of the decisions. Hopefully, we're not going to see a game decided by a referee once again after what happened away at Scarborough during midweek. We don't need that two weeks in a row. It could be we see Mark Bauer joining Jamie Spencer on the sidelines next week if he... Loses his rag once again at the officials. Ball now has broken out of play on the far side. Kidderminster will get us back underway with a throwing. Some 20 yards inside their own half. It's flicked on well by Fremantle. Fremantle at the moment looking to be the focal point of the attacks for Kidderminster. But I think so far the best of the game has probably gone the way of Avenue. While Kidderminster have had most of the possession, Avenue doing well defending any of the attacks that come their way and the chances that have broken, they've only been half chances, certainly the hopper case for the penalty. Good header by Fremantle, he gets ahead of his defender. It's one well, the ball's broken here for Lowe. Lowe cuts on his left foot, shoots well and it's just it's a couple of yards over the bar from some 20 yards out, 20 yards out just outside the box. Cutting on his left foot, looked for the spectacular Sykes Kenworthy. It was always comfortable, but it was close. Kid means the potential of being forced into an early substitution here. Either that or Russell Penn is uh, Russ Penn is not happy with the display of his number eleven CC. CC does look to me. It does look appear to be does appear to be limping. The tall winger. It will be Kaziah Martin replacing Yusifu Cisse. Kind of glad he's gone off, to be honest. I can do without having to say Yusifu Cisse too many times. Sykes Kenworthy to get us back underway. Goes long in towards Hopper. It's won well by Martin, making his first moments of the game. Unfortunately, the ball went out of play before Martin made the contact, and it will be a Kidderminster throw in. Linesman going the way of the Harriers on that far side. As is always the case in the Conference North, teams do chop and change extremely uh, regularly because of the lack of transfer window. The transfer window open all the way until the spring of 2023, allowing all the teams to chop and change the teams as needed. Loans come in and out. Month, one month loans are a regular teams trying to find the cohesion as the season goes on. Knight Percival goes long, switches a play towards Folks on this far side. It's dealt well with by Maruza. Folks goes back into Burn now. 
won well by Jamie Spencer. A hard man in midfield, doing extremely well so far for Avenue this season. He's going to be a big miss in the next game for Avenue. Ball now back in play with Christian Pierce. And he goes into the captain, Byrne, and Byrne goes into the channel where Fremantle will get there first and goes back into Folks. Folks looking for options. Maruza does well again. Maruza showing extreme strength. Great defensive work by the left back. Been really impressed with his defensive work so far here today. Got his foot in. Can carry the ball extremely well. He's tall, he's quick. Certainly looking to make an impression while he's out on loan from Huddersfield Town. Restart and get his back underway. Goes left footed into the channel towards Blythe once again. It's won by Pierce. Richmond takes down possession, goes into Andre Brooks. Andre Brooks knocks it past Folks. It's gone right into the corner. Andre Brooks and Folks both in a 50 50 challenge. It's probably always going to go the way of the defensive side, and Kidderminster do win a free kick very close to the corner flag. Once again, the game just falling into a bit of a back and forth at the moment. Neither team able to really get on top here so far. It's going to be restarted by Tom Palmer for Kidderman. So it goes long towards Fremantle. Mitchland wins it. It does flick off nicely, but Haven is on the sweep to help out his centre back and clear the ball away for Avenue. Ball's now broken for Kidderminster, deep into the avenue half. It's down the left. It's crossed in by Caleb Richards. It's blocked well, and James Spencer will be able to put a foot on the ball and clear. Kidderminster do get in the way of it, and again, it breaks for them. They're looking to win the ball high back, win the ball back high up the pitch. They look to keep the pressure on. Avenue have managed to get away, and it's broken all the way back to the Kidderminster defensive line with Knight Percival. Knight... Kidderminster are yet to have a real opportunity of much danger, but they have had most of the ball. Russ Penn will be happy with his team's possession, but he won't be happy with what they've done with it. So far, they've had very little in the way of threatening attacks. Andre Brooks does well to step in here in the midfield and win the ball back and gives it to a Dunstan. A Dunstan takes the ball, a touch out of his feet and gets away from his man. Andre Brooks does extremely well. Oh, does too much. He's very fortunate, is Andre Brooks, there to get away with that one. The referee is going to make the play stop and come back for the free kick to be taken where it is. Um, Richmond looked to get on with it quickly. Andre Brooks was very fortunate to get away with that. He got caught in possession, allowing Kidderminster to get a foot in. Thankfully, the referee thought it was a foul. And the referee so far struggled to just keep on top of some of these challenges. Ball. At the moment, in a head tennis battle between the two sides, Haven gets there first, clears, and Christian Pierce will pick it up under no pressure in his own box. Looks to carry it out, gives it into Byrne once again. Shane Byrne looking to be the player to drop the deepest from the midfield to give Kidderminster options to start building attacks. Caleb Bridge is now on the left hand side, just inside the avenue half, goes back to Knight Percival once again. Knight Percival gets his head up, plays right footed into Richards, disguise that pass well. Richards left with no option by Avenue but to go all the way back. Avenue extremely solid in defence so far. Jamie Spencer now putting effective pressure on the, the defensive line to try and move the ball a bit quicker. Good play into Hemmings here. Hemmings finds Richards. Richards crosses left footed. It's crossed the edge of the box. It's cleared well by Maruza for Avenue. Knight Percival heads it back in where Hopper is the man first to to first there for Avenue and it breaks once again for Kidderminster Avenue extremely deep so far Folks crosses from deep and it's taken well by Sykes Kenworthy Avenue extremely deep uh, just for the last two minutes or so of play there the only man left forward being Jacob Blythe who is occupying a position some 10 or 15 yards inside his own half while Avenue are out of possession Gone long now from Sykes Kenworthy. Headed well by Christian Pierce once again. The two centre backs winning nearly every ball that comes near them. Certainly something that they would be expected to do given the height, the jumping reach, and their, their experience. They know when to drop off. And 
to be fair, so far Jacob Blythe has put the two under very little pressure. Good ball from Kidderminster from left to right into Folks. Folks goes back to Burn. Burn him again for Kidderminster. Goes all the way back to Christian Pierce. So far, Kidderminster getting to positions of of potential danger and potential threat for Avenue and then tend to go back. And a lot of it is down to the Avenue setup. They have fantastic defensive structure between them. Kidderminster down the left hand side now with Zach Brown. Zach Brown does get a cross in once again. No threat to Sykes Kenworthy. Easily taken by the Avenue number one. Sykes Kenworthy looks to go short this time. Into Restorn, who's under pressure from Fremantle. Sykes gets Steve Staunton, sorry, goes. Staunton's pass goes straight into the grasp of Christian Pierce, who once again gets his big head on the ball, plays it back the opposite way from where it came. Staunton now in possession again, gives it into Andre Brooks. Andre Brooks turns well, goes left footed into Hopper. Hopper manages to get there first into Maruza. Maruza looks to cut in between the two Kidderminster defenders, gives the ball away and Folks is able to clear towards Fremantle. Should be dealt well by Luke Haven. He goes all the way back to Sykes Kenworthy, who looks to go instantly long once again towards Jacob Bly. Jacob Bly wins the flick on well this time up against Knight Percival. Better from the big man. Much better from Jacob Bly. That's what he needs to do to allow Avenue to get out and start building some pressure of their own. Releases the, the pressure that Kidderminster is sometimes putting on, on Avenue when the big man can win the balls up front. Knight Percival can't be allowed to win every single. 50-50 up there. He has to win his fair share, the big man. I do think that Mark, in Mark Bowers' thinking today it will be that Jacob Blythe will be up against the two big men. Eddie Church started the season well, was very effective during pre-season and showed himself to be pretty competent in the air as well. However, the two men that he's up against today, or potentially could be up against today, are of extreme experience and height. So it might be a case that Eddie Church would struggle against them more so than Jacob Blythe, who's got the natural height. Richards now down the left side for Kidderminster. Into Burn, who switches. Looks towards Folks once again. And it comes off the fullback for Kidderminster now for an avenue throwing. Maruza gets his head up. Doesn't want to overcomplicate. Gives it back to Staunton, who looks to go long towards Blythe, Blythe and Knight Percival up again with each other, Knight Percival wins it once again, breaks now for Richmond, Richmond into Maruza, takes a good first touch out of his feet, he's running forward, the big man does extremely well, it's a great tackle by Christian Pierce, and then he drags the ball out of his feet and starts an attack for Kidderman, so little one-two with Zach Brown, Christian Pierce is still ongoing, it's a good ball and it's unlucky, Fremantle just didn't read the ball from the experienced centre-back, and it breaks through for Sykes Kenworthy. Probably the best moment of the game for both teams. It looked like Matt Maruza was going to break it right the way through the middle of the pitch. Carried the ball a long way. It was dispossessed by Christian Pierce. And Christian Pierce then instantly went on a charge of his own. Very real Ferdinand like. Jacob Blythe and Christian Pierce just having a tangle in the middle of the pitch there as they both ran towards the ball. Both unhappy. Play continues. Now with Byrne into Hemmings. Hemmings back to Byrne, and Byrne goes all the way back to Folks, who goes all the way back to Tom Palmer, who's a fairly short goalkeeper for Kidderminster today. Good tackle by Reece Staunton in the middle. Had an effective start to his game here today. I think it's a fantastic coup on two-year deal from Bradford City, the young man. Back here now for Kidderminster. He's whipped in deep. It's going to go all the way through and out for a goal kick. Potential there for Hemmings to get on the ball at the back post from the cross from the left. Nothing given on this occasion. Sun has just gone away here, which takes away from the strain from the ice for a minute, folks. Once again, thank you very much for joining us live on YouTube as we bring. The live commentary from the Horsfall Stadium. Kidderminster now back in possession. Zach Brown goes to his left, where the substitute, Kaziah Martin, cuts inside. 
gives it to Nathan Lowe, he's struck by Byrne, and it is going to bounce out for a corner. Nathan Byrne struck the ball, it was a bit of a toe poke, and it bounced off, I believe it was Richmond, and out for a corner for Kidderminster. The corner will be taken by Ashley Hemmings on this near side. It's going to be taken left foot by the winger. Lots of big bodies forward for Kidderminster. It's whipped in left footed, it's deep. It goes all the way across to Burn. Burn manages to take the ball down. The referee says it's gone out of play. It was close, I think he probably kept it in to be honest, but it doesn't protest, which tells me that it probably didn't. So, pretty decent delivery by the Kidderminster winger. It went very deep. It was looking for somebody in at the back post to head it back across the six yard box. Burn nearly kept the ball in. Unfortunately for Kidderminster, referee thinks it went out of play and the game will be restarted by Sykes Kenworthy once again. Goes short this time, disguises a long one, goes short to Staunton. Staunton now goes long in towards Andre Brooks. Folks will be first there, he does win the header. It's won well and cleared away by Hemmings. Hemmings has gone into the space, Fremantle is going to get their first. Oh, that's fantastic goalkeeping perception by Sykes Kenworthy. He stepped out as if he was going to run and take the header in the challenge with Fremantle. And he backed out and took a, took a couple of steps back and waited for the ball to nestle nicely into his hands. Good work by Jamie Spencer here to get Avenue back on the attack. Maruta goes wise to Andre Brooks. Andre Brooks now takes a touch, looks to get his head up. One on one against Folks, the right back. Disguises the ball, goes back to Maruta. Maruza looks to get a crossing right footed, it's deep towards Blythe, Blythe takes a touch, takes it away from the defender, does well and goes into a Dunstan, not seen much of the young right back so far for Avenue, but nice to see him get into the game, Richmond with his back to goal, just keeps hold of the ball away from Knight Percival who's been dragged out of the centre back position, he's now on the left wing up against Richmond, he's following Richmond everywhere he goes, Richmond goes back inside to Staunton, takes a touch and goes right footed towards Maruza on the left and unfortunately Staunton on his weaker right foot delivers a an inaccurate ball and it goes out for a throw in for Kidderminster. Good effective pressure there by Avenue. Just unfortunately for Avenue, it doesn't lead to a goal scoring opportunity on this occasion. Both teams just settling into the game now. Neither team looking to, to go too long. Or I do believe that at this stage of the season, both teams are in a place of not wanting to lose the game as much as they are wanting to win it. I think the press is probably more there for Kidderminster to win today, given their indifferent start to the season and the hope for promotion. It's a fantastic ball by Hemmings to Richards, and Richards has taken that down on the left-hand side with some aplomb. He cuts inside and goes back into Nathan Lowe. Nathan Lowe gets his head up and goes to Folks. It's a fantastic touch by Richards that on the left-hand side. In here now with... Zach Brown, Zach Brown cuts in on his left foot, goes back out to low. Jacob Black does well to flick it away and gives it into Spencer, who's looking to get on the counter. He's got very little option with him, he keeps the ball well. Referee going to give a throw in to Kidderminster. Spencer unfortunately ran the ball out of play, he had very little options and he was left with no other option but to run down the, the touchline and unfortunately take the ball out for Kidderminster throw in. Adam Nowakowski and Eddie Church here just making their way into the pavilion as plans for half time start to tick away. Both managers probably already thinking about what they can do to change the game. Kidderminster already a sub down, so unlikely that they will do anything at half time. I think Mark Bauer will be happy enough with his team from a de defensive standpoint, but I think on the attack, I think they've been very limited, unfortunately, today so far. They need the ball to stick with Jacob Blythe a little bit more and some effective pressure on the, the back line. Fremantle gets a flick away down the right-hand side and it will go out for an avenue throw-in. Deep into their own half, some five yards up from the edge of the box. Maruza will leave the ball for Staunton. Reece Staunton did get opportunities at Bradford, was often part of the match day squad, decided that he wanted to drop down a couple of levels to find regular first team football and without a shadow of a doubt he will be starting week in, week out at Avenue 
Staunton does get dispossessed here and the referee allows play to continue. It's Zach Brown. Zach Brown skips away from Haven Haven with fantastic defensive work. Fantastic defensive work there by the experienced centre back. Nobody knows non league like some of these boys for Avenue. That was fantastic work backing up Ree Staunton. Staunton thought he was fouled. It did look as if it was fouled. The linesman didn't give it. Matt Bauer is actually complaining with the, the linesman as we speak. The ball then did break to Kidderminster in a very dangerous position. Thankfully for Avenue, Luke Haven was there to mop it up for him. Staunton now with the header. Puts it out for a throw in for Kidderminster just inside the Avenue half. Hemmings will look to get us back underway quickly. He'll now leave the ball for Folks actually. Change of mind. Get back underway on this right hand side, some five yards inside the half. Inside Avenue's half for Kidderminster. Played into Hemmings and Jacob Blythe gets there and puts the ball out for another throw in for Kidderminster. Neither team have had much control of the game so far. Avenue have had a five minute spell, Kidderminster have had a five minute spell, but no real clear chances for either team. Good turn by Nathan Lowe. Lowe looks to go to Burn now and who's going to switch it very quickly to Richards. Richards pulling very wide the left back on the far side, cuts inside and gives it to Lowe once again. Lowe gets his head up, looks to shift the ball out of his feet, gives it to Hemmings. Hemmings goes left foot from a long way out, some 25 yards out, way over the bar. And Sykes Kenworthy will look to retrieve the ball from the hedges as if he's 15 year old. Fan has done it for him. He's not had to go on the hunt on this occasion. No ball boys here today. Hemmings very speculative to hit the, the strike from that distance leaning back. He claimed corner but it never was. Sykes can worthy to get us back underway. He will go long on this occasion. Once again towards Jacob Blythe up against Knight Percival who wins ahead of this time does a big number nine for Avenue. It's broken out for Richmond and now Blythe. Brings it down for Hopper. Hopper not being able to get into the game so far. Very effective was the young man against Kings Lynn in the opening day. It's broken now for Kidderminster where captain Shane Byrne picks up the ball into Richards. Richards seeing a lot of the ball on this left hand side. Certainly looking to start most of their attacks down that side. Maruza gets there first. It breaks for Kidderminster. A good tackle there by Haven. Now out with Hemmings on the right hand side for Kidderminster. He manages to dig across him. It's brought down on the edge of the box. It should be cleared by Avenue. It's very scrappy. It's broken well and Maruza will eventually clear the ball. Not quite and it's broken out for Hemmings again for Kidderminster. It's crossing by Folks. Cleared by Staunton. Out for Byrne on the edge. He looks to set up a strike. He thinks twice. Sets up another one. Away from Jamie Spencer. Gets, a, gets away with it. Referee plays. Referee played, played on, it broke for Hemmings on the far hand side, cross left footed, it had Sykes Kenworthy back pedalling and thankfully for Avenue he managed to claim the ball well and keep it out of the keep it out of the goal. Very sloppy in, in and around the box from both sides. Kidderminster couldn't quite get the strike away, Avenue couldn't get the ball away. Probably the best moment of the game for either team, certainly the, the chance with the most likelihood of a goal resulting from it. Could hardly keep up with how broken the player was there. Staunton now has cleared well for Avenue into Andre Brooks. Andre Brooks looks to turn away from his man. Good footwork by the young man on loan from Sheffield United. He's got a bit of play now. Reece Staunton has joined the attack. He delivers from deep. It's a fantastic delivery by Reece Staunton. He was Knight, Knight Percival just managed to get there ahead of Jacob Blythe and flick it away. Fantastic delivery from the centre back. And it's gone. Ow, after the night of Percival touch for an avenue throw in, Lucas O'Dunson will take it far on the far side, deep into the Kidderminster half, some two, two or three yards away from the corner flag. O'Dunson steals a couple of yards back as it's very difficult to take a throw in that deep. Good touch by Blythe. Richmond, it nearly breaks, but it's cleared well by Kidderminster. Very soft free kick given there by Kidderminster, uh, from the referee for Kidderminster, sorry. Nothing in that challenge. A little bit of afters against the man who cleared the ball, Caleb Richards. 
Kilbridge has never complained, never asked for a free kick and the referee decided to give it anyway. Again, we'll get back underway with Tom Palmer for Kidderminster. Christian Pierce will look to carry the ball out, give it to Folks. Folks takes a funky first touch and gives it to Andre Brooks and it's now allowed play to break for Avenue. Here's Spencer. Spencer under pressure. Gives it into Andre Brooks. Andre Brooks plays it in between the two into Blythe. And Andre Brooks down the channel. Can he keep it in? He can. It goes out for a kid of to throw in. Certainly the best spells of the game for Avenue have come down there. Left hand side through Maruza and Andre Brooks. Both hoping to play their trade at a higher level to this. Looking to get the experience of men's football where they can. And what a great place to do it. The Horsfall Stadium. Kidderminster now go long into Zach Brown. Zach Brown holds it up, keeps it in play, gives it back to Martin. Martin looks to get the cross in. It's blocked well and it's cleared well by Mitch Lund. Ball now back down with Knight Percival into Martin. Martin delivers from deep. It's headed well by Haven. And Andre Brooks will clear. It's a shanked clearance, but he might actually get to his own clearance. He certainly fouls, folks. Mark Bauer and Danny Boschel got absolutely ballistic on the touchline. I do have to agree with the referee on this occasion. Folks got his body in front of Man and Ball. And Andre, Andre Brooks, in his eagerness to win the ball, flew through the Kidderminster man, giving away a free kick. Law takes it quickly into Hemmings. Avenue have not started. The referee says, no, 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 no. I'm not ready. Bring it back. And unfortunately for Kidderminster, the free kick will need to be taken again. This may now result in Kidderminster delivering the ball into the box rather than trying to take a short one. Nathan Lowe and Ashley Hemmings stood over the ball for Kidderminster. It will be... <laughs> They, they both got confused, did the uh, Kidderminster men. Nathan Lowe now goes all the way back to pretend like he's going to take this free kick again. And he does run over the ball again. And Hemmings delivers left-footed in towards the back post. And it does go all the way across. And it was Zach Brown who met the ball some 10 yards out, left-hand side of the six-yard box. Awkward angle for him to strike first time. He struck on his left foot, which I believe is his unfavoured foot. And out for... A goal kick with no real threat once again to Sykes Kenworthy's goal. Good delivery by Ashley Hemmings. As we're closing on the end of the first half, both sides will be hoping for more in the second half. Avenue certainly have defended well on the whole. One moment of difficulty which resulted in a half chance for Kidderminster. They should have made more of it really as the ball broke and bounced in around the box ball now is with Hemmings from 10 yards outside of the box he's tripped there by Maruza surely nothing given Maruza thought it was a foul as well he claimed that it wasn't he's given the ball back to Folks now because he wasn't concentrating poor by the young man there Hemmings gone on with it it's delivered by Folks it's defended well by Staunton cool as you like from the young man cool as a cucumber previously been on loan at Avenue Christian Pierce, beautiful bit of experience there. Shaped as if he was going to go back to the goalkeeper to take Jacob Blythe off the path and turned away, keeping possession for Kidderminster. I mean, it was poor by Maruza. He certainly should have just played to the whistle. He thought he'd even given a free kick away and allow it, allowed folks to put him under pressure. Resulted in a half chance for Kidderminster. Thankfully, from an avenue perspective, the ball didn't break on this occasion. For the Harriers. Ball now back with Martin and gives it into Hemmings. Hemmings goes to Lowe. Lowe looks to get the ball out of his place. Fantastic defensive work again by Richmond. He's absolutely clattered by Nathan Lowe. He's left in a bit of a heap. Referee wants to have a word with him. I don't think he's going to book him. He may. He, do, he is going to pull the yellow card out of his pocket. I think this is more for a build up of challenges. That was a little bit reckless from the Kidderminster midfielder. But I think in combination with the challenge that should have been a yellow card earlier, he's going to now receive one. So the first person, the first player of the day to jump into the referee uh, John Mulligan's book here today is Nathan Lowe, the Kidderminster centre midfielder. Good for an avenue perspective. We'll put the... Midfield two on guard a little bit further. Won't want to result in a second yellow. 
get back underway here with Sykes Kenworthy in the Gulfer Avenue. Goes long once again towards Jacob Blythe up against Knight Percival. Knight Percival appears to elbow Jacob Blythe in the face. He's in some discomfort is the Avenue number nine. Is it being in the walls this half? He's looking to pick himself up. The referee says that the physio doesn't need to come on to take a look at him. Knight Percival's ran away from this at some speed. He's been asked to come back by the referee. He's surrounded by Kidderminster players. Christian Pierce having his say, along with captain Shane Byrne. The referee now looks as if he doesn't want to speak to Knight Percival. I certainly think he should have done. If he's going to give a free kick for that... You've got to ask the question, what's he giving a free kick for? Well, he's elbowed him to the face. So, <laughs> I'm not really sure why the referee hasn't pulled out a yellow card there. Fourth official, as just indicated, there will be two minutes of added time. So, as we're closing on the end of the first half, Jamie Spencer and Reece Thornton stood over the free kick some 25 yards out, left of the D. A lot of back and forth going on here. Our Knight Percival is now going to get a talking to by the referee. Now that the referee's given the distance for the the wall, he goes over and speaks to Knight Percival and Jacob Blythe Jacob Blythe looks to say well it was you who has been given the free kick against, strange, strange bit of refereeing, anyway back underway, looks as if this will be Staunton to take it, it is Staunton left footed, it's, it's poor it's floated, it, it was floated short and it hit basically the first man, goes out for an avenue throwing some 30 yards out on the far side Staunton should have been hoping for a much better delivery there to give Avenue an opportunity before the end of this first half. Big 15 minutes ahead for both managers as they look to take the lead in this game. Foul given against Jacob Lai. They would think he's particularly frustrated. Knight Percival using his experience, winning a free kick from the throwing. Poor by Jacob Lai. Tom Palmer will get us back underway with probably what will be the last action of the half. Can't imagine that there will be much left in this half once this kick gets taken. It's going to go long. And there is the half-time whistle. Back and forth half so far. Avenue will be happy with the defensive work. Very little on attack. Kidderminster had some half chances. But again, not really anything to shout home about. Kidderminster players surrounding the referee at half-time. I'm not really sure what that's about. But as we finish for the first half here at half-time at the Horsfall Stadium, it is Avenue nil, Kidderminster nil. We will be back shortly after the half-time interval where the YouTube stream will go live once again. See you soon.
very warm welcome back to the second half here at the Horsfall Stadium. Give you a quick rundown of the halftime scores elsewhere in the Conference North today. AFC filed at home to Scarborough. You got 2 0 lead there for the away team. AFC, AFC Telford 0, Kingsland 0, Alfreton 3, Southport 0, Blythe 0, Gloucester 0, Boston United 0, Chorley 2. Brackley Town 0, Farsley Celtic 1, Avenue and Kidderminster obviously 0 0, Curzon Ashton 1, Kettering 0, Darlington 1, Banbury United 1, Hereford 0, Buxton 0, Leamington 0, Spennymore Town 0, Peterborough Sports 2, Chester 1. League table doesn't mean too much at this stage of the season, but. The, the results obviously lay the foundations for the rest of the season in the Premier League for those of you that are interested that haven't got access to the scores Spurs 1, Wolves 0 early kick off Palace 1, Villa 1 Everton 0, Forest 0 Fulham 2, Brentford 1 Leicester 0, Southampton 0 about to get back underway here at the horse fall where football is real football. It'll be Jamie Spencer who gets us back underway with an avenue kick off. Avenue kicking left to right this half. As they'll go in search of that goal that hopefully can give us our first three points of the season. A really kick start our campaign. Back underway, Jamie Spencer goes all the way back to Luca Haven and will go long towards Blythe. We have had no changes at the start of this second half for either team. Both teams looking to potentially play some cards later on to change this half. Good flick by Blythe in towards Andre Brooks. Andre Brooks and Hopper. Oh no, sorry, I do apologise. It looks as if Will Longbottom has actually replaced Hopper at half time. That substitution wasn't made on the sideline by the fourth official. It's just. As it appears, it just has happened. So Will Longbottom's gun going out to the left, and Andre Brooks has come across to the right, probably to just try and mix it up a little bit. A lot of Avenue's attacks were down the left hand side, with very little success down the right. So I'm not surprised to see the sub. Hopper more natural in the centre of the pitch than he is out on the right. I feel a little bit sorry for the young man. Had a fantastic start to the season off the back of a brilliant campaign in pre-season in the middle in more of a diamond alongside fielding Richmond and Jamie Spencer Avenue getting us back underway down the left hand side of the restart and going to throw long flick well by Blythe and then flicked on again by Longbottom nobody then in the middle to follow on the flick on as Blythe was out on the left hand side Avenue do set up just the same. Back five, Staunton, Haven, Lund, Dunstan, and Maroods are on the left. Good header by Haven. Flick then by Richmond. Spencer carries on the flick into Blythe. Blythe can't bring the ball down. Knight Percival gives it away to Andre Brooks. Good footwork again by the young man. Gives it into a Dunstan. Dunstan carries into the right, drops it off to Richmond, who then gives it to Brooks. Brooks looks up. Looks left footed inside to Spencer. Spencer plays it round the corner into Blythe. Good footwork. Good football by Avenue. Brooks cuts inside onto his left foot. He's going to strike. He does strike well. And he just threatened to bounce in front of the keeper. It was straight down the Kidderminster number one's throat. Tom Palmer gathered it well. Didn't spill. Didn't allow Jacob Blythe to sniff for any rebounds. Collects it well, but good work by Andre Brooks. Very clear that he is going to be able to cut in on his left foot from the right hand side. Kinnaminster now go forward. It's headed well by Lund. It's dropped nicely for Fremantle. Fremantle allows it to go out for Kinnaminster throwing, which will be taken on this left side by Richards. Richards plays it in to Martin. Richards now looks to cross from deep and it's straight out of play for an avenue goal kick. Good start for, for the second half from Avenue. Got the ball into a more dangerous position down the right, an area of the pitch where they did not threaten at all in the first half. Andre Brooks looking to cut in on his left foot. Hopefully doesn't become too predictable. They'll look to double up, send him on in the inside. The defensive pairing of Percival and Pierce will look to mop it up as he looks to cut inside. 
Good start by Avenue. Gone long now by Sykes Kenworthy. In towards Blythe, it's won by, well by Knight Percival. In the middle now with Nathan Lowe. It's broken for Avenue with Maruza. Maruza gets his head up, gives it back into Spencer. Spencer under pressure, gives it into Longbottom, who goes back to Haven. Haven's got Lund for support, and Lund lets the ball run in front of him, goes into the midfield, into Richmond. Richmond flicks it to Blythe. Blythe needed to get there first. Pierce was able to get a foot in front. Good ball out wide by Spencer. Into Maruza. Maruza looking for options. He's going to look to cross. Good defending by Folks for Kidderminster. Fantastic defending by the young fullback for Kidderminster. Got his body in between man and ball and stopped Maruza from being able to get another touch on the ball to whip the, the cross in. Knight Percival now will go long into the channel towards Brown. It's carried out of play for an avenue throwing. Throwing will be taken in deep into Avenue's half by Dunstan. Dunstan goes down the line in towards Blythe. It's over Blythe. It's defended well by Knight Percival. Out for another avenue throwing as Avenue. Avenue looked to use the line to gain some advantage into the opposition half. Dunstan will take again. Had very little, little of the ball as the, as the attacking fullback for Avenue so far. Dunstan goes down the line now towards Blythe. Blythe heads well into Longbottom. Longbottom tried to get Andre Brooks in, but it broke for Kidderminster. It's back with the Dunstan. Dunstan looks for options. He's got Spencer. Spencer will chip it into the channel towards Brooks. It's had to be dealt with by Richards. Richmond's looking to follow up, it's broken and it's cleared away by Knight Percival. Spencer underneath the header, Brooks flicks inside. Unfortunately for Avenue, it doesn't just break for us on this occasion. Haven flicks it out to Maruza. Avenue certainly started the second half, the better of the two teams. Mark Bauer and Danny Bosch will be absolutely delighted with the start they've made to the second half. Lund goes diagonal towards Maruza and it will carry out all the way for a Kidderminster goal kick. Much better start from Avenue though. They've been far more on the, of an attacking threat at the start of the second half. Longbottom making a difference in trying to look for flick-ons and look to get in and around Blythe. And Andre Brooks far more natural to the wing position. Certainly it would appear as if he's natural to cutting in on his left foot from the right-hand side and not just carrying the ball down the left-hand side on his more natural side. Tom Palmer sends everybody away and goes long. In towards Ethan Fremantle. Had a brain freeze there. Fans, sorry about that. Haven clears. In towards Blythe. Blythe shrugs off Knight Percival. He smiles as the referee does give a free kick to the former Bradford City man. It probably is a foul. He's used his hands. He's getting drawn into far too much of the, the game that Knight Percival wants him to have so far. Turned well by Martin in the midfield for Kidderminster. Referee plays on. It's into Brown. Brown goes to Folks. Folks looks to cross from deep. It's defended well by Longbottom. Got his body in front of the ball to stop the cross. Roughly 10 minutes into the second half. Still Avenue nil. Kidderminster nil. Christian Pierce delivers the cross from deep. It's headed well by... Headed well by... Uh, Haven. It's broken out for Spencer into Richmond. Richmond doesn't get a hold of the ball and Pierce comes away with it. Pierce into Fremantle. Fremantle back to Lowe. Lowe looks to his left and gives it into Martin. And Martin looks up for Richards but may cross from deep instead. Cuts inside into the captain, Byrne. Byrne to Lowe. And then Lowe goes wide now for Hemmings. Hemmings cuts inside on his left foot and it's all the way back with Christian Pierce inside the Kidderminster half. Kidderminster have got in, as I said in the first half, got into some dangerous positions and then look to get the head up, very little options and go back. Richards skips away from Andre Brooks, it's defended well by a Dunstan. Richards looks, looked to deliver the ball into the box, a Dunstan got out to his man quickly to stop the delivery and out for a Kidderminster throw in. Back in play now once again with Richards. Richards into Brown. Brown looking to deliver from the left hand side of the avenue box is cleared well by a Dunstan all the way back through to the Kidderminster number one. 
Christian Pierce will look to start the attack once again. Jacob Blythe trots across to put a little bit of pressure on the man in the midfield. Byrne now looks into the channel to Richards. Richards just inside the box is a judge to be offside from the linesman on the far side. Good defensive line by Avenue. As the drum starts away to my right for Avenue, the support gears up to try and push Avenue to find that first goal today. Does look a reasonable attendance inside the horse fall. Few Kidderminster in the South Pen. Unbelievable attendance from Kings Lynn on the opening day. Behind that goal for the opening game of the season. Tights can where they goes long once again towards Blythe and it's over Blythe and cleared by Fawkes. Fawkes into Fremantle. Fremantle brings it down. It's cleared by Haven into the midfield. It's challenged by Byrne and it'll be brought down by Spencer. Spencer does well to bring the ball down. Blythe looks to get on the move instead of looking to be the target man and bring the ball down. He looked to run into the channel. Spencer had not picked that up. And it's broken now once again for Kidderminster to start another attack. They go long this time and it goes all the way through to Sykes Kenworthy once again. Zach Brown looking to feed off Fremantle for Kidderminster. It's probably been their best route to the avenue goal so far. Blythe gets up well against Christian Pierce this time. Unfortunately, it goes all the way through to Tom Palmer for Kidderminster, but much better by Jacob Blythe to win the 50-50 up against the big man at the back for Kidderminster. Law now picking the ball up in the midfield for Kidderminster into Folks and Folks back to low again. Staunton can clear. It's more just in hope from Staunton in the clearance and he gives it all the way back to Hemmings. Hemmings in forward towards Brown and Brown can't take the ball in possession. He gets up quickly to put Staunton under pressure. And Staunton is left with no option but to play it back off against Brown and out for an avenue throwing deep into the avenue half on the far side. Staunton taking this throw again instead of Maruza, looking to use the height of Maruza as part of the flick on. Blythe gets in front of his man as well. Blythe does win the, the flick on into Longbottom. Longbottom wins the flick on as well. Pierce. Will go all the way back to his goalkeeper and allow him to pick it up because he headed it past. Knight Percival will probably pick this up short. He does. Knight Percival gets his head up, looks to carry out Blythe. Slow to put him under pressure, allowing Knight Percival to play it long. Sykes Kenworthy left with no option but to clear. Can't allow the ball to come back to his box. Fremantle does well up against Spencer and Lund. <laughs> Jamie Spencer in challenge with Russ Penn, the manager for Kidderminster. Always on the wind-up is the National North hero, Jamie Spencer. The National North, David Beckham, we'll, we'll call him from now on after his goal midweek against Scarborough. Poor ball by Christian Pierce, straight out for an avenue throwing just inside the avenue half. Once again, though, the half has settled now into a... A stage of back and forth, both teams careless in possession, neither team really creating much. The game has had very little in way of clear cut chances. Maruza now has won the ball well. He looks to play into the channel for Andre Brooks, a better pass, and he gets that away from Knight Percival. But unfortunately, the pass was a little bit away, and Knight Percival was able to step in. Kidderman so quickly looked to go along, and once again, it's meat and drink for Sykes Kenworthy in the avenue goal he now goes long from his hands towards Jacob Blythe who's pulled onto the full back Richards probably a clever attempt of an out ball for avenue it's gone out for a throw in really deep into the Kidderminster half by the corner flag It'll be taken by Richards avenue will look to pen them in the corner here and win something from the seconds Richards goes down his line. It's bounced all the way through to Haven. And Haven goes straight towards Blythe. Good header by Blythe into Brooks. Brooks unfortunately can't get the ball down and it's snapped away by Brown for Kidderminster. Into Hemmings. Kidderminster now looking to counter into Fawkes on the right hand side. The attack slows down. Avenue able to get back into 
position. Comes across to Knight Percival from the captain, Shane Byrne. Knight Percival carries the ball from the back, left footed, into Richards. Richards looks to skip away from a dunce and goes back into Law. Law gets his head up and into Byrne. Once again, the attack for Kidderminster just slows down so quickly. Knight Percival goes to his left. It's a good ball into Richards. A Dunstan goes to meet him. Richards cuts back inside. It's good defending by a Dunstan. He's left with no option but to go back into Martin. And it, once again, it comes back across the field from Kidderminster into Shane Byrne, who goes all the way to the right back in Falks, who once again goes back into Christian Pierce. Kidderminster seem to get into some dangerous positions. I've said it a number of times today before then, being left with no idea, no impetus to really drive at the Avenue defence. It's got to be said, the Avenue defenders have defended extremely well so far. The back three of Staunton, Lund and Haven have been widely, very little challenge so far. A Dunstan and Maruza have both defended well. Not been able to do much going forward, unfortunately, from an avenue perspective, but they have defended extremely well. A Dunstan's been put under a little bit of pressure at the start of this half, and so far dealt with any danger extremely well. Play will be back underway with a Dunstan with the throw in on this right hand side, bang on halfway line. It's flicked on well by Blythe. Long bottom looking to feed off the scraps in the 50 50 with Christian Pierce, who is a man mountain of a man against Long bottom. He drags the big defender to the floor and gives away a, th a free kick. Could have been so look to get back underway quickly now. It's switched by Byrne. It's flicked away by a Dunstan out for could have been to throw in. Richards will take. Gets back underway quickly into Byrne once again. Byrne into Richards. Richards into the ins inside into Martin. Byrne into Martin again. Playing some little tippy tappy one twos. Low into Hemmings. Hemmings chips it inside to Fremantle. It's clipped in. It's flicked away well by a Dunstan. It has now dropped for Brown. Brown looks to get his head up and take it away from a Dunstan. Great defending once again by the young fullback. He clears it down the line and Avenue are able, hopefully, to get out. And Knight Percival intercepted it from Blythe. Well, Blythe just not able to get in front of the experienced defender. I think Eddie Church would feed off the setup of this game so far. I'm interested to see how long Mark Bauer waits to make the decision. Hemmings now picks up the ball for Kidderminster halfway inside the Avenue half. It's good football. Burn plays it in uh, low. Sorry, plays it in quickly. Good turn away by Martin. Martin appears to be the player for Kidderminster that could unlock the gaps into Brown. Brown looks to get a cross in and it's blocked well by Haven. Good defending by. The avenue number five. Kidderminster certainly looking a little bit more threatening in this last couple of minutes as they look to get the ball moving a little bit quicker in and around the edge of the avenue box. Martin looking to pick up some positions. He's floating all the way across the box. The ball is going to be delivered here from, I believe it's Hemmings, left footed. He plays it short to Martin and looks to take it back from his man. He delivers from deep. He's gone a long way and Haven should be able to let this bounce and clear. He can and it's cleared well. Folks is there first. It's won well by Christian Pierce. Back on the attack here, Kidderminster. It's delivered by <laughs> overhead kick by Haven to clear the ball away. It was Knight Percival who looked to deliver the ball left footed. It hit the back of Haven. Haven left with delivering an over overhead kick to clear the ball. It's gone out for a throw in. The game has just been stopped temporarily while Spencer is down. Looks like he's going to receive some treatment. Physio told not to come on as of yet. I think he's going to be able to make his way back up. He's the hard man. The non-league David Batty and David Beckham all rolled into one. I think he'd like that. He's back up and the game is able to continue. Richards with the throwing halfway inside the avenue half it's Brown who takes it down Brown's forced that play Matt Bauer <laughs> furious with the linesman once again as he gives a throw in to Kidderminster that was clearly an avenue one 
Oh, it's broken well for Avenue here. Longbottom's taken up possession halfway through in the Kidman's half. He skipped away from his man. That's surely a foul. Nothing given once again by the referee. And Mark Bauer once again fuming on this side as a free kick is then given to Kidderminster. When it looked like Knight Percival had cleared the ball out under no pressure, Longbottom took up possession halfway inside the Kidderminster half, looked to approach in towards the Kidderminster box. Knight Percival appeared as if he'd got his feet mixed up, clipped the Avenue man. The Avenue man was sent to the ground, nothing given. It looked as if it was then cleared under no pressure by Knight Percival, and the referee has given a free kick for Kidderminster just on the edge of their own box. Strange moment from both teams and then from the officials. It looks as if Longbottom was going to be a way to potentially put Avenue ahead. Good defending initially, but it looks as if Longbottom's little bit of skill played the Kidderminster defender. And it, it certainly looks as if we should have had a free kick on the edge of the Avenue, or on the edge of the Kidderminster box, which would have probably resulted in a red card for the defender. All the way back now with Christian Pierce, who's gone back to the keeper. Takes a touch and gives it into Percival, who gives it back to Christian Pierce. Good defending, good work by the back line there for Kidderminster, keeping possession. Pierce goes long. It is a little bit of a scuffed ball. Staunton isn't first there for Avenue. It ends up breaking well for Brown. Brown plays it in, Lund heads it away, but it has gone out for a throw in on the far side for Avenue, just outside their own box. Substitution coming up here, and it is the one. I mentioned earlier, Eddie Church will be coming on. Who is it going to be that's coming off? It is Jamie Spencer, the number seven. Oh, change, change of plan. It looked like it was going to be Spencer, but it's actually going to be Andre Brooks coming off for Eddie Church. Originally, it was Spencer who was running across. It looked as if he expected the substitution. Andre Brooks, potentially, just with a little limp, Mark Bauer making the decision. Andre Brooks had a fantastic first half. Started the second half well, but did die off this last 10 or 15 minutes or so. So Eddie Church looks as if he's going to join Blythe up front. And it's going to be more of a 4-4-2. I would imagine that that will then see Staunton go into the midfield. It looks as if we're going to stay the same. Knight Percival heads all the way back to Tom Palmer. It still looks as if we're going to be set up the same, but Church will fall, probably join Blythe a little bit more centrally than Andre Brooks did on the right. That's how it looks. It looks as if Church is going to be more central. Anyway, Hemmings cuts inside, gives it to Brown. Brown looks into the channel. Good defender by a Dunstan. He's had a very good half as the former Leeson Hull man, Eddie Church, holds the ball up extremely well. Dunstan goes long towards Blythe. Blythe needs some support here. He gets it from Richmond. Richmond plays it inside to Church. Church lets the ball run across his body. Gives it to Blythe. And Blythe, unfortunately, just drifted into an offside position. I do think he had. He complains with the linesman, but I think he had just drifted off. Kidderminster looking to get on with this quickly. The breaking with Martin. Martin plays it into the channel. Folks is not going to get there, thankfully, for Avenue because they were stretched for a moment. The game now looking to open up just a little bit as we go towards the latter stages of this game. Probably around 20 to 25 minutes still to go here at the Horsall Stadium. Both teams deadlock. Park Avenue nil. Kidderminster nil. Ball back in play now and it is Kidderminster in possession. Fox chips it forward towards Martin and it's flicked away. And out for Kidderminster throwing halfway inside the Avenue half. Definitely appears as if Avenue are still sticking with the back five. Maroods and Stott and Dunstan giving the width for Avenue. Richmond and Spencer in the mid in the middle with Longbottom and Church either side of Blythe up front. Ball's broken now for Hemmings. It goes left to Richards. Bit of space here for the fullback. He's approached by a Dunstan. Checks inside. Hemmings gives him support. Crosses left footed. Sacks Kenworthy comes a long way and manages to get a fist to it. Maroods are then cleared. Good work by the Avenue number one. Had to make it once he'd committed. 
and did with just one fist rather than going for both and potentially dropping the, the catch. Good goalkeeping. Ball back in play now with Kidderminster defence. Church has snapped onto it. It's oh, very fortunate that Knight Percival managed to get to his feet. It's broken now for Blythe and Longbottom has unfortunately put too much on the ball and it goes out for a goal kick. Knight Percival took an awkward touch. Eddie Church was straight onto it to put him under pressure. He blocked the clearance. The ball then broke for Longbottom. Longbottom looked to release Blythe quickly and instead of an accurate pass, he put it straight out for a Kidderminster goal kick. Disappointing moment. These are the moments that Avenue are working from with this style of play, with this structure. They need to make the most of their moments. Kidderminster will get us back underway from the goal kick. It's Fremantle with the header. Wins it well. It's flicked on well. And here's Martin. Martin's challenged by Spencer, who once again gets his body in the way and clears into the left-hand channel, where Blythe will put the keeper under pressure. It's cleared away well by the Kidderminster number one. Into the midfield, Spencer wins it again. Fantastic work by the man in the middle. Spencer wins the 50-50 against Church. Good work by Kidderminster there to keep held, hold of possession. Brown played into the channel up against Mitch Lund. Mitch Lund backing up towards his own box. Brown with a little step over, plays onto his left. Good defending by Lund and a Dunstan and out for a Kidderminster corner on this near side. It's going to be taken by Nathan Lowe for Kidderminster. Both teams threatening opportunities to take that first goal. Very much like the Kings Lynn game, it feels like one goal will win this game. Low to take the corner. Going to whip it in right footed. It's delivered in. It's deep. And it's headed away by Staunton. Church looks to get there first, but it's headed back in by Richards and then cleared once again by Blythe. Richard gets there first, but Shanks is clearance out for throwing. Bang on the halfway line for Avenue. Avenue able now to get out. Maruda will look to take this throw in for Avenue. Maruza looks for options. Gets us back underway now, looking down the line. He's got Eddie Church who's looking to spin in behind. Blythe behind him also. It's Folks with the header. Richmond win gets there first and goes out for a Kidderminster throw in. Some 30 yards inside the Kidderminster half. With Joe Folks to get us back underway, goes down his line and headed out once again. It's cleared well by Hemmings. Ball playing head tennis at the moment in the middle. Longbottom does well, gets his foot in there and it breaks now for Lund. Lund looks up for options, he checks back inside and gives it to a Dunstan. A Dunstan goes back to Lund again. Lund now looks to get his head up, deliver a cross. It's Pierce who gets himself there first and Knight Percival manages to clear the ball for, Ke for Kidderminster. Dunstan gets his foot on the ball, looks to get away from Martin. At the moment, both teams are struggling to get a foot on the ball. It's good work by Eddie Church to keep Avenue on the attack. It's broken out for Longbottom. That's certainly a foul against the Avenue man from Lowe, who already is on a yellow card for Kidderminster. Longbottom just making his way to his feet under instructions from Mitch Lund. Haven't even. Luke Haven now does walk away from Longbottom after giving instructions. I would imagine that this is going to come in left footed by Longbottom. Spencer does stand over it as well. Some 25 yards out, just to the right of the D. Good opportunity for Avenue. In a game of so few opportunities, they'll be hoping to make the most of this. Bit of wind, drag it in towards the goalkeeper, put the keeper under the pressure. Spencer. Dodges away, long bottom strikes, and it does make the keeper move. Some a couple, couple of yards over the over the bar. Unfortunate from long bottom. Good effort from the wide man. Keeper will get us back underway for Kidderminster. Certainly was threatened by the free kick from long bottom. 
Kidderminster number one sends everybody away, looks to go long. Holding up in the wind just ever so slightly, it's won well by Lund. Burns underneath it once again. Staunton clears. It goes in towards folks at right back who does win the header for Kidderminster. It's turned by Brown and once again Mitch Lund is there for Avenue. Neither team just able to get a foot on it until now where Folks picked it up and gives it to the captain, Shane Byrne, who looks to go into the channel down the right-hand side. It's won well. And here is Fremantle for Kidderminster. It's chipped in and it's defended extremely well once again by Reece Storms and an out for a Kidderminster corner on the far side. Both teams just looking for that moment. But delivered in by Hemmings for Kidderminster, left footed from the far side. Referee just blowing his whistle temporarily, just stopping play. A lot of players packed into the six yard box, in and around the goalkeeper, leaving Sykes Kenworth a little option to come out and try and claim this. You can see where this is going to be coming into. But Hemmings with the delivery now, crosses in towards the six yard box. It is touched by Sykes Kenworthy, referee waiting to take the initiative and, and blow the whistle to blow for a free kick for Avenue. Sykes Kenworthy has stayed down with a, what looks like a little knock. Referee says that he doesn't need any treatment. It was good keeping by the Avenue number one. He made sure that he got there, got something on the ball, gave the referee a decision to make and thankfully for Avenue gives a free kick for Sykes Kenworthy. Substitution for Kidderminster. It'll be number 21, Gabby Rogers, coming on. Taking up the left-hand side position. Right-hand position for Kidderminster. I believe it's Hemmings who's come off for Kidderminster. Had a very good half. The left-footed right winger. Sykes can where the goes long in towards Blythe. It's won by Pierce. Feel like a broken record the amount of times that we've said that today. The big man at the back has won absolutely everything that's been thrown at him. Staunton will get us back underway on the far side with the throw in down the avenue left. It's played into Blythe and I believe it came back off Folks. Once again, the referee decides in the favour of Kidderminster and gives a throw in to the away side. Folks has get a back of them underway down the right hand side for Kidderminster. It's cleared now by Haven. Pierce underneath it once again. Headed back in towards the halfway line. Richmond challenges and it breaks for Maruza who looks down the left hand side and does unfortunately shank his clearance out for another Kidderminster throw in. the attendance was being given there but it was just this this uh, weekly raffle hopefully the winner today takes home something nice that he can likely give to his better half or her better half played down into the channel and we it has broken nicely it's cleared by a Dunstan he was left with no option but to clear with his right foot and it kind of shanked the clearance out for a throwing in a dangerous position for Kidderminster. It was good work by Ethan Fremantle. Folks back in possession down the right hand side for Kidderminster. Plays it back into Byrne. Byrne shapes the cross and he does now left footed in towards the six yard box. It's headed well by a Dunstan. Longbottom gets there first and he does look to clear down the, the right hand side of, for Avenue and out for a throw in. Shane Byrne looking to get Kidderminster back underway quickly with Richards. Richards takes the ball down well. He gets away from Longbottom and away from a Dunstan. Good footwork by Richards. Chips in towards the six-yard box, but Sykes Kenworthy is there once again for Avenue to claim the cross. Very little final third quality from either side, and that is resulting in both teams having very little clear-cut opportunities in front of goal, which is why we still sit on Avenue nil, Kidderminster nil. 
clearance by Sykes Kenworthy goes up and high, doesn't go far. Thankfully, Spencer's there first. Eddie Church in challenge with Shane Byrne does catch the Kidderminster captain and gives away a free kick bang on the halfway line. Back underway very quickly for Kidderminster. Kidderminster certainly looking to up the tempo and try and drive a goal in this game. Richards crosses from the left in towards the back post. Somebody needs to deal with it. It bounces all the way across past Maruza. Kidderman's are looking to deliver the ball. It will be delivered by Folks in towards the six yard box. It's headed well by Mitch Lund. It comes to the edge of the box for Brown and it's blocked well once again by Lund. And away from Danger 4 Avenue. Back in Kidderminster possession. However, Folks delivers from deep in towards Fremantle. He gets away from his man. Gives it away where Maruda should be able to clear. Avenue just with their backs to the walls a little bit here at the moment. The ball did break well for Brown on the edge of the box. He struck it exceptionally well. But Mitch Lund, ever the man for Avenue, threw his body in front of it and blocks the chance away from Sykes Kenworthy's goal. As we enter into the last 10 minutes here at the Horsfall Stadium, Kidderminster are just on top currently, looking to get that all decisive goal. Knight Percival go comes to his left, gives it to Richards. Richards been an out ball for. Kidderminster all game. Poor clock cross. Gives it to Spencer. Spencer looks to get his head up into Church. Church brings it in well. Surely Knight Percival comes through the back of him. Eddie Church does complain. Referee once again gives nothing. Lund has to deal with it and it does go out for Kidderminster throwing on this near side. Eddie Church is arguing with the referee that Knight Percival came through his through the back of him to get the ball. It did look that way from up here. Nothing given by referee John Mulligan. He's not going to be on the Christmas card lift of Mark Bauer or Danny Bushell here today. Back underway with Richards. On the left-hand side for Kidderminster. Looks to deliver. It's given back to Brown. And Richards takes up the position to one, once again receive the ball. It's flicked inside by Byrne, the captain. Long bottom has picked up the ball now for Avenue and it's cleared by Haven. Church backs into Knight Percival, doing a very good job there, Church. And Knight Percival dragging the Avenue forward to the ground. Once again, the referee missing what looks like a clear decision in the way of Avenue. Kidderminster to get on with the game. Down their right-hand side, it's checked inside by Sam Byrne. Into low. Gives it back to Burn. Looking to deliver. It's now with Folks. Folks delivers. It's headed well, away well by Staunton. Rogers down that side into Brown. Brown looks to find space for the cross, but he's left with no option but to go back. Maruza looks like he fouled the Kidderminster man, but once again the referee waves play on. Maruza now able to carry it down the avenue left. Checks inside. Kidderminster have been allowed to get back into position with how long Maruza's has kept hold of the ball. Great work by Maruza to then draw a free kick and allow Avenue a bit of a respite from some of the pressure that they've been under and also be able to deliver from that left-hand side into hopefully a dangerous area for Avenue. Martin claims he didn't commit an offence, but on this occasion I do believe Maruza did win a a strong free kick there from the Kidderminster man. Spencer and Longbottom will stand over this. It's halfway inside the Kidderminster half. Plenty of bodies forward for Avenue. Spencer runs over it. Longbottom delivers. It's deft. It's Haven. And it's just over the bar. Some eight yards out. Back nearly... Level with the penalty spot. Good header by Haven. Just couldn't get over it. And unfortunately it goes out for a Kidderminster goal kick. Probably the best opportunity of the half for Avenue. Squandered by the big man at the back. Tom Palmer for Kidderminster will get us back underway. The very last stages of the game here. It's cleared into the, around the halfway line. It's a foul by Jamie Spencer. Kidderminster will look to take this free kick on halfway. The wind is certainly starting to hold the ball up a lot. It's taken quickly by Lowe and given to Folks. Avenue looked to have switched off a little bit here. 
Rogers out on the right hand side gives it back to Lowe who looks to deliver right footed it's a good delivery and it's right across the six yard box it's cleared by Haven and a free kick is given for a challenge on Haven it was a bit of a wild swing by Martin inside the box for Kidderminster and thankfully for Avenue no danger comes of it referee brings a physio on Haven did take a bit of a clatter Delivery from Folks was fantastic, right across the six yard box. It looked extremely threatening. It was defended well by Haven. Just a quick break in play here. Some of the players look to take on some fluids. As John Luca, uh, Luca Haven take on, takes on some tension from the physio. We have got Adam Nowakowski getting ready below us here, looking to make an introduction for the last moments of the game. I believe we're in the last five minutes of normal time. As it stands, Avenue look to take away a point from a team that would hope to be challenging at the top end of the table. However, given the way that the game has gone, both teams really... Have not done enough to win the game. Avenue will be hoping that they can just get that one moment of quality before the end of full time to take all three points. Over a week until the next game where Avenue are here once again at the Horsefall Stadium against Spennymore on Bank Holiday Monday. Hopefully a number of you listening today may join us down at the Horsefall Stadium but if you can once again Game should be live on YouTube. Luke Haven left with no option but to now just have a moment off the pitch. Think he should be able to continue. Doesn't look too terminal. He's walking off, but with a small limp. Don't believe Nowakowski's coming on just yet. Mark Bauer tells him just to hold his horses. Sykes Kenworthy will get us back underway with the free kick bang on the six yard line. Having his moving much more freely now as he jogs towards halfway. Ball from Sykes Kenworthy goes all the way through for a Kidderminster goal kick. Having is now back in the back line for Avenue. Still with a small limp, hopefully, nothing too much. It did look more impact than. Anything too terminal. Probably a sore one in the morning. A couple of days off training. Should leave the big man all right. I'm sure he'll manage his career at full time. Game will get back underway with Tom Palmer in the Kidderminster goal. The wind just blowing the ball on the Goal kick line, just stopping the keeper, taking it temporarily. We do now get back underway, go long, in towards Fremantle. Fremantle flicks it inside towards Brown. It's won well by Staunton, who gives it to Maruda. Maruda into Blythe. Blythe, good little touch inside to Longbottom. It's good, well defended by Folks for Kidderminster. Back to the keeper, who takes a touch and looks to go long quickly, under pressure from Eddie Church. Spencer in the middle wins a header into Longbottom. Longbottom challenges well with low. Can an avenue body get on the loose possession? Longbottom is there once again. Folks, under challenge from Church, does put it out for another throw in for Avenue. On the far side, halfway inside the Kidderminster half. Can't be long to go now. Mark Bauer does signal for the substitution. It'll be Adam Nowakowski coming on, replacing... I believe it will be Jacob Blythe, it will. It'll be the big man up front. Nowakowski looking to just give a different threat for the last moments of the game up top. Jacob Blythe told to go off on the opposite side instead of delaying time. Referee particularly picky today with some of his decisions, but Blythe forced to walk around the long way. Adam Nowakowski will go in. Straight up top alongside Eddie Church. Maruza will look to get us back underway on the far side, halfway inside the Kidderminster half with the throw in. 
Plays it in towards the big man. Headed away well by Kidderminster. And back into danger by Spencer, but it will unfortunately go all the way out. Not for a goal kick, but throwing deep into the Kidderminster half. Pretty much bang on the corner flag, which will be taken by Folks. Folks gets his back underway, uses a line. Nowakowski heads it back from where it came. Folks and Church in battle. And it breaks away of Avenue. And Avenue do win a free kick. Some 10 yards outside the box on the far hand side. Very deep into the Kidderminster half. This will certainly be an area to deliver. In towards the big men coming forward from the back. Dunstan stays back with the one Kidderminster attacker, Zach Brown. Everybody else is in the Kidderminster half or penalty box. Once again, it'll be Spencer and Longbottom that stand over the free kick. Maruza just making his way back to his feet. Jogs away. He's fine. It's just a, just a knock. Takes up his position on the edge of the box. Spencer and Longbottom decide who's going to take this delivery. I would imagine from this position it'll be Longbottom. It is Longbottom. Left-footed. Floated in well. And it's headed by Church. And unfortunately, he just can't get his head over the ball and he does put it out for a comfortable Kidderminster goal kick no threat for the Kidderminster number one on this occasion good delivery by Longbottom this church just got ahead of the run and probably got too much on the contact currently have two balls on the pitch we'll just have to take a moment to take one off the wind has actually blown the second ball off the pitch to give you a kind of idea of what kind of gale we're dealing with here now at the Horsehall Stadium? It's become very blustery. Tom Palmer will get us back underway. Goes long. In towards halfway. It's won well by Fremantle for Kidderminster. Richards now carries the ball down the left hand side. Looks to go inside towards Brown. It goes back to Richards. Richards looks for options, gives it to Byrne. Byrne plays it into the channel. The ball's just hold, held up again in the window. Dunstan just able to get a foot in. Great defending by the avenue number two. Church comes across. Knight Percival under pressure. Does put it out for a throw-in. It is a throw-in for Avenue. It did look as if he may have given a, a needless free kick away there, Church. But thankfully, the referee goes in favour of Avenue on this occasion. As the fourth official does announce, four minutes of added time. We are in the last moments here at the Horsefall Stadium. Jamie Spencer down currently with a bit of pain and what looks like a bit of a hip knock. Rubbing his thigh also. It may be that he doesn't see out the last few minutes here. He's just got a little limp on. He says to Mark Bauer, I'm okay. He doesn't look okay, I'll, I'll tell you that, folks. Dunstan will take the throw in halfway inside the Kidderminster half. Matter of minutes to go here at the Horsfall Stadium. Down the line in towards Nowakowski. Nowakowski does win the flick on and it will go all the way through to Tom Palmer in the Kidderminster goal. Sends everybody away. Will likely go long here. Puts the ball down. Church puts him under immediate pressure. Palmer goes long in towards Fremantle once again. It's challenged by Haven. And it's broken nicely for Longbottom. Longbottom, left-footed, into the channel where Church will harry folks, but it will go out for a Kidderminster throw-in. Opportunity for Avenue to pen Kidderminster into their own half for this last couple of minutes. Hopefully something can break for Avenue. Folks goes down the line. Spencer up, challenges. Longbottom flicks on. Folks with the clearance for Kidderminster. Up well by Fremantle, but once again won by Haven. And flicked out for a Kidderminster throw-in. Everything that's been thrown at Mitch Lund, Haven and restarting today has just been headed back. Very little success for the Kidderminster attack. Certainly centrally. Most of their good work has come down the Kidderminster left. Just have another break in play as Maruza does now need some treatment on the far side. So he's just sat himself down pretty much bang on halfway. Nowakowska told to go into the back line with Kidderminster in possession. 
and a defender down that makes a lot of sense Staunton will likely take up a position for this last few minutes at left back <laughs> it looks as if Maruza may have just got a bout of cramp should be able to continue for the last couple of minutes he does have to stay off now the referee lets him back on quickly he's able to get back in position Knight Percival now with the ball for Kidderminster on halfway, chips into the channel. Lund, difficult one to deal with, he was on the stretch and it's Brown who picks up possession, gives it to Richard. Richards crosses right footed in towards the six yard box. Spencer gets there first, heads away into Folks now, halfway inside the avenue half. Looking for an opportunity to deliver, it's Byrne with the delivery, it's flicked on and it is in. Unbelievable moment here at the end of the half as Zach Brown wins the flick on bang on the edge of the six yard box flicks it away from Sykes Kenworthy it's a floating header and it does go over the avenue number one and into the back of the avenue net very little opportunity here for avenue to find a route back into this game avenue nil Kidderminster one literally could be the last touch of the game it was an excellent delivery by the captain, Shane Byrne. Flicked on by Zach Brown. Nothing Sykes Kenworthy could do. Once the header was won, it was always going to float over the avenue number one. Unfortunate moment. A game of absolutely no, no real quality from either team. And it's been won by a moment deep, deep, deep into the half. Very similar to Kings Lane in the opening, opening weekend of the season. Neither team really doing enough to win the game, but one moment results in the one goal of the game. Avenue desperate to find just one moment before full time. While four minutes was added on, we've had a lot of stoppages within added time. So hopefully we may just see one more moment for Avenue. Kidderminster to make a very late substitution as the man earlier on that was on a yellow card Nathan Lowe comes off and is replaced by Tom Leake who will go slot straight into the midfield ball played back now quickly to Staunton Staunton will go long in towards Church Church does win the header it's flicked on it's a Dunstan and it's cleared away by Knight Percival Pierce gets a big head onto it I do believe that went out for a corner for Avenue on this near side. It will be Longbottom who looks to take the delivery left footed. Big moments here for Avenue. Mark Bauer and Danny Boschel do send Sykes Kenworthy forward. Could we see a moment to remember here, folks, as the Avenue number one is sent up. It's delivered by Longbottom. It's a good delivery and it is towards Sykes Kenworthy. It's flicked away well and that is the last moment of the half. Seems like an incredibly quick finish to the four minutes of added time considering the injuries. Unfortunately, Avenue beaten at the death by a deft header by Zach Brown. Big gutting moments, gutting feelings for the boys here today. Certainly will feel hard on to, to not come away with anything from the game. Unfortunately, it does finish Bradford Park Avenue nil. Kidderminster Harriers 1 thank you very much for joining us on our live stream YouTube here today hopefully we'll see you all back for a week on Monday as we welcome Spennymore to the Horsefall Stadium thank you very much for joining us